Oh my God, they did it again. Tall girl is back and taller than ever. Just imagining some kind of like Godzilla-esque creature stomping over the cities of wherever the hell these movies take place. Actually, it looks like she leveled out. <laughs> I think she's, uh, I think she's sticking where she's at. You know, good for Yodi. And you know, I know a bunch of people uh, as I was talking about like waiting for, for Tall Girl 2 to come out with great anticipation. We're like very confused that this movie was even happening. Uh, and to those people, I would really just like to uh, take note of the sheer amount of hate watching that, that occurred around this movie. How many videos people made on the original Tall Girl for just months? A sequel was inevitable. The algorithm needs to be fed. My algorithm needs to be fed. That seems like it could be taken wrong, but um, yeah, so we're here. We're covering Tall Girl. I just need everybody to know that when I was taking notes, I had to use my phone and my phone kept correcting the word tall to y'all. And I think I would personally prefer watching whatever the hell y'all girl is. There's a lot of different directions it can go. Right now I'm manifesting something with a cowboy hat. But hey, let's uh, let's hop into this one. It's been a little while. Uh, three months have passed in, in the movie universe, but three years have passed in the real universe. It brought them all back. The Gluckster and all. Except that one girl. That one girl that was way too good to be a part of any of this. Yeah, she's like, nah, I'm good. The queen. But anyways, because it's been so long, the filmmakers realized like, we should probably give them a little bit of a refresher as to what happened in the last movie. They didn't give us a refresher on any of the really fun stuff, which is fine. It is very helpful. We get the reminder that, you know, she's she's currently with the Dunkelman. You know, she had been with the Swede for a little bit. But he totally played her. Uh, you know, the Dunkelman got her those like fancy high heels so she could fully appreciate her true self and stature. And then realized like, hey, I love the little Dunkster, the little king the short king that everybody in the world watching this movie was like, that short king can get anyone. That short king deserves that other girl that he has now shaded and was too good to be here. And I'm glad she left. I hope she's doing really good things. I'm gonna look it up. Not right now. It'll be in the edit. All right, I did the research. She was in Hubie Halloween. Hubby Halloween? I think it's Hubie. I didn't want the Adam Sandler thing. Bigger and better things is the point. But yeah, they get together. He whips out his milk crate so he can like get on her level and kiss her. Uh, and everyone at home, I'm sure, because I did, yelled at the screen because we knew this little King Griffin Gluck was too good for her. But also, I specifically yelled uh, because girls with tall boyfriends don't carry around milk crates to get on. Did I say crakes? Girls with tall boyfriends don't stand on milk crates to get to their level. They don't carry them around. Everybody else in the world is managing just fine. You know, Jody can bend over a little bit. And then if you're gonna be like, well, no, they're gonna make fun of her because she's tall. Like she just got over that for one. She just got over that. And two, what do you think they're gonna say about the person carrying the milk crate around? Exactly. Also, they're explaining all of this to a cashier. But if you need a more thorough reminder and breakdown, I will have my video for the last movie linked down below. A major takeaway is that Jodi isn't a great person. I don't know if she ever really has been. And not even in a way where you feel like she learns to be a better person, because that is not the conflict of Tall Girl. The conflict of Tall Girl is that she needs to be confident in her tallness. But honestly, after overcoming such heights, like being tall, what could be the problem this time? Now apparently this movie is all about Yodi's miscommunication causing problems. But one thing you don't have to worry about miscommunication wise is today's sponsor, HelloFresh. So even if it doesn't seem like it, I am a fairly busy person with terrible organizational skills. I frequently feel like I'm just holding it together so if the options are going grocery shopping or ordering in food, Ordering food is super tempting. But thanks to HelloFresh, healthy meals that are fast and easy to prepare are delivered right to my door for a fraction of the price. Every week you're provided a ton of amazing meal options to choose from, giving you control over your goals and lifestyle requirements. Meals like coat and roast chicken dinner and maple glazed salmon. So time is always the biggest concern on my end, so I go right for those 20 minute options. But if you're looking to start some like new and healthier habits, their pre-portioned kits make meal prep a breeze. And the best part, they're delicious. I don't need to sacrifice flavor for convenience and neither do you. So head on over to hellofresh.com and use code JEDI16 to get up to 16 free meals plus three free gifts. That is hellofresh.com and use code JEDI16 to get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So she is now super popular at school because once you, uh, you know, confidently assert yourself in such a way, the people that treated you like a social pariah your entire life just want to be your best friend now. She even gets asked out by a new kid and the dunkster is not happy about that. Obviously, she was not anywhere as near as much of a freak of nature as she thought she was. Because if a new kid wasn't going to walk in and be like, wow, why is everybody being so nice to this freak? It was clearly not that bad and it was just like, you know, 
jerks. Now the one really good thing about Jody in terms of personal growth is that she's been totally willing to um, forgive Stieg, the Swede, even though he kind of like screwed over a little bit. It's uh, uh, Farida and the Dunkster that are not willing to. Keep walking, Ikea. I get it. She's following like girl code trying to defend her friend and he's just pissed that his foreign exchange student roommate tried to steal his girl. But he's trying so hard to get back in their good graces even though he was like such an asshat in the last movie uh, that I just can't help but want the best for this little puppy-like dude. He's adorable. It's great. <laughs> but she's finally worked up the courage to audition for a school musical, one of her dreams and goals, and it's Bye Bye Birdie this year. Which is where she meets Tommy, a clear resident heartthrob who seems super into her. And she honestly seems to be getting a little bit flirty with him too. Knows that he was in Hairspray, thought he did fantastic. The Dunkster Gluckster doesn't need this. But this guy was specifically a fan of her speech and starts like reciting it back to her in a way that you could almost think is an insult or like in a condescending way. But no, it is very sincere. But I felt it was sincerely cringe as all hell. Um, if someone was reciting anything that I said back to me in this way, I would die inside because I did die inside just watching this happen on screen. The second he started reciting, I started muttering no, 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 no to myself and I was, I was in public, so the horror. Also, this guy looks familiar to you. He is Diego from 13 Reasons Why, Netflix's other most infamous piece of media. Keeping it in the family, we always like that. We always like, what? And here's bitchy, no, that that can't be her name, Kimmy. Her name is Kimmy. But Kimmy is obviously very pissed that Jody is auditioning for the lead because she's always the lead. And I totally forgot that she calls Swede Sticky Baby. Miss me, Sticky Baby? I can't remember why, but I think that's the most hilarious nickname. But during Jody's audition, the director specifically asks, what would you say to the people who don't think being tall is that much of an issue. Getting a terminal illness, being homeless, those are real problems. What do you have to complain about? Oh my God, they're calling us out in the movie in real time. That was the most common criticism from like most reviewers, formal and YouTubers alike. Like her complaining to people who absolutely would have had bigger struggles to many different degrees about not knowing what it was like to be tall and the real struggles about being tall. And the story, I understand that everybody has struggles and that being taller than average can have its own set of issues and insecurities. The same way the different facial features can, or like if you have acne or the way you walk, your stature or just like really imperceptive things that only you notice. So I'm like, I'm really not unsympathetic to that. They just made her an unsympathetic protagonist with the framing. It's like, yeah, she's tall and insecure about it and they could have made it work. They didn't. They made her so terrible that everyone instantly had to be like, really? Really, Jody? We don't know the real struggles of what it's like to be tall, to need size 13 men's shoes. Like, what do you think it's like to be a size like three in children's shoes? What do you think that's like for me, Jody? As an adult? What do you think that's, it's actually pretty sick. I, my, my shoes don't cost as much, it's great. But you know, it's a struggle. I couldn't properly stop on skates as a child. Like it really just came down to the level of whining in certain lines like. You think your life is hard? I'm wearing size 13 Nikes. Men's size 13 Nikes. Like girl, I get it. You're a dramatic high schooler, but for the love of God. But the movie calling out reviewers who made that comment in the first time is if we're saying like, you can't have struggles or complain about anything in life because there's people out there with like cancer is ridiculous because there's always somebody with the worst problem out there. We really weren't playing some kind of like struggle Olympics, but it's just that she was making it seem like being tall was worse than every other issue. So that's obviously how we were gonna take it and frame it. I'm just imagining some teenager like dying in the hospital being like, well, at least I'm not tall. I also totally forgot that Angela was her mom. Iconic, love that. And I forgot about the sister uh, and Harper. Genuine champion, just the best. She just got a job in LA. She's gonna take over that whole city easy. Yes, the entire city of Los Angeles, she's taking over. But Jody's got big news too. She got the lead in the musical. Whoever could have foreseen that happening in the sequel to Tall Girl. And at this point, we know she is very confident in her height. It doesn't bother her as much when people focus on it. So like, what could possibly go wrong for Jody? At this point on, like she's got the gluck, she's got the lead, she's allowed to be tall, but all too soon, the paranoia of everything going so well starts to settle in. And there's that voice in her head telling her that she's just gonna fail at everything, so why should she even try? And in this movie, instead of it just being like her thinking that to herself or saying it out loud, she's actually getting some kind of like voice in her head, like berating her. And I, and I really like that. I think it was something that I saw 
done recently way more creatively in a movie called Violet, which I definitely recommend checking out. I almost feel like they were inspired by how that played out to do that in this movie. But I do just genuinely like the idea that this is somebody kind of like struggling with, with things and they, they put that to screen because I'm sure that's something that a lot of people, especially teenagers, can relate to. Maybe not quite to that extent, but uh, I, I do like it because it is something that a lot of people deal with. I will give this movie the props where the props are due. Most of those props do not ever surround Jodi, so we'll give her the one that she's got. <laughs> so she turns to the queen. Harper for advice on the voice in her head and she gets just as dramatically theatrical as you would imagine when giving this advice it's fantastic it's just a horrible part of life that never goes away like Maroon 5 and she mostly kind of says that it's something that you're just gonna have to deal with your entire life but it does a really good job in dressing the idea of something like imposter syndrome and the lack of confidence that comes out of that and really feeling like you don't deserve or have earned the things that you have and it's something that everybody's gonna deal with at some point or another you know who doesn't have imposter syndrome though bitchy I mean, Kimmy. She's just openly bullying this teacher in a bathroom for giving her the understudy role. And this teacher doesn't seem like she should be enough of a pushover to be letting this happen, but there she is bullying the teacher in the school bathroom. And she may not be punishing Kimmy for being way out of line, but she's also not backing down from casting Jody either. So Kimmy devises a new plan. Humiliation and sabotage until Jody drops out. <laughs> a classic. Except for her pal Schnipper, who you may remember that he was the one that they set Jody up with uh, on a date last time. Uh, He's apparently super torn up about that kiss they shared and doesn't want to be friends with someone so cruel. And the one thing that this movie did correct is remember that the most common thing across the board was people saying that the side characters were infinitely more interesting and better than Jody. So even though this is called Tall Girl 2, they do leave a lot of breathing room for those other characters, which I usually hate and definitely takes away from any kind of like plot driven aspect of this movie. But I will take it over being locked in with Jody the entire time. Like I would truly take the movie about bitchy girl over Jody because she will go through a better plot progression in this movie. But we learn that Farida gets the opportunity to design some clothing for a local store, which is nice. Give her something other than just being the best friend. And the Swede is super into it. He's like the number one hype man, it's great. But I also feel like they've now kind of unintentionally ruined the dunkster. He just spends all this time running point for Jody. He brings her smoothies that he makes for her every single day, has her set up with throat teas, lozenges, pitch pipe, and kettle for her first rehearsal. So he's both simultaneously the most helpful little angel and probably like a little bit overbearing too much. Cause it just kind of leaves room for Tommy to slide in who obviously got the male lead role in the musical. So he's got a lot of time to make his moves. And honestly, we can be upset for our short King Dunk while also acknowledging that Tommy seems like a total angel. Main takeaway, I want the best for both of them and neither of that is Jody. And as expected, that first rehearsal went a little bit rough. Uh, Kimmy starts some light manipulation and insults and mind games with Jody, but uh, she's just kind of making a few mistakes here all on her own to varying degrees. Someone out there is into that, so go on, Jody. But yeah, Schnipper really just cannot stop thinking about that one little kiss they had. Do you ever think about that time we kissed? No. Right, me too. I like, I can't with this movie. It's like she's suddenly Bella Swan and every dude in the school suddenly wants her. But it's her and Dunk's three month anniversary and I'm still weeping over how overly obsessive he is. The boy tried to make a turducken. Now the whole night is a tur dumpster fire. How is that helpful? His dad is absolutely the best character in this movie and it's not even close. Okay, Harper might be a little bit close, but like this man has a few lines and they're all gems. And see, little Amy Angel, who is just too good for this world, immediately steps in to fix the meal, even though Dunk has continuously been rude to him the entire time he's been around. Which I kind of get, the Swede stole his girl that wasn't actually his yet. But Stig, in my opinion, is fully redeemed. He even waits on them. Amazing. She's gonna break this little king's heart though, just you wait. She's kind of like self-fulfilling prophesying herself, letting herself get all worked up by that voice in her head, telling her she's gonna ruin everything and sabotage everything. So she sabotages everything. I will admit though, the Gluckster makes a mistake here. She's talking about being super stressed about theater and all the rehearsals and just feeling really overwhelmed. So he says, hey, if you need to bail tonight and get some work done, I'm totally okay with that. So she gets up to leave. What, 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 <laughs> are you actually leaving? Don't make offers you don't mean, Dunkster. I can understand why he would have thought that she wouldn't have taken him up on that offer. And it was kind of shitty of her to not say, oh, well, okay, if you're sure that's fine, 
I'm gonna go and just like stand up. But again, making offers that you don't really mean is just setting yourself up for disaster as we've witnessed here. But also they're in high school and they both do genuinely suck at this and that's to be expected because they're in high school. I was so dramatic in high school. We were all dramatic in high school. So she ends up leaving anyways, uh, which is also shitty, but now everyone is giving her advice. And for once it's Farida and Harper, not the parents given the real primo advice or at least the better advice to go apologize and like talk it out. Again, the Gluck is not without fault here. Go have a conversation. But in true Angela fashion, uh, the parent comes in with the don't you dare give up any power advice. It's like, okay, bitch, he's worked his whole life to get you and make you happy. I'm pretty sure you can make the move to mend the bridge. They also say her main priority should be the musical and she's promoting it on her TikTok and he invited her pediatrician. You're on TikTok? You don't follow me? So that's not helping with her anxiety at all and it's the next day. And hey, when she blows things up with Dunk, at least Tommy's waiting in the wings. Cause Dunk won't crack and points out exactly what we've all been thinking. He's spent his whole life chasing her. Bring your smoothies daily. It is her turn to step up if she cares. Nobody wins in this kind of fight. This is America. There's always a winner. So they all sit at their usual table for a lunch because Jody assumes Dunk is going to crack and he assumes she is. So it just pushes to them baiting one another to end their relationship until it happens. Fine! I want to break up! Great! Great! And then before that fallout can happen, Dunk's dad shows up with Sig Sisters. Sig Sisters. Sig Sister Stella. That was a tongue twister. And yeah, she's also a tall girl. What are you gonna do now, Jody? And she thinks he's adorable and is super excited to meet Jody because all of these Swedish people are just the best. And because Jody and Dunk are fighting, he agrees to leave school early with them and enjoy the afternoon. How was school today, bud? Who'd you play with? Okay, between the dad and Jody's sister, some of the best characters in film history here. No, I'm not exaggerating, fuck you. So Jody's obviously super self-conscious and thinks that he's off to get himself a new tall blonde, but uh, Stella is apparently dating the very attractive heartthrob Ingvar Kruger back in Sweden. You know what, I think I kind of blew my chance of being friends with you too. Of course not, Dunkers, I love you. You see what happens when we get him away from Jody for a little bit? Emotional growth and development. Cause now he's here to have the best homie, the Stigmeister. Okay, holy shit, this school takes musicals super serious. Look at this giant banner and then this giant banner. But putting up banners like that, like I feel like that is a recipe for bullying. I wrote massive banners in my notes and it autocorrected to massive boners. Thought you ought to know. But Tommy kind of realizes she's been freaking out and explains that he really related to her speech and takes her all the way to this park to explain why. No, Jody, I couldn't possibly tell you my personal history in this abandoned balcony when we were all alone. I must take you to this secondary park location. The boy is an angel though and deserves the world, which isn't true. I'm sorry, I'll stop. I won't. It's why I'm here. Before this, he also calls her out on judging him for his appearance, when that is literally the thing that she has complained about her entire life because she just assumes that he'd have no struggles or issues with confidence because of the way he looks. A king, like he's doing it to her kindly, but still needed to be said. So the reason why Tommy related to her speech so much is that he used to be really overweight and he worked super hard not to be, but the anxiety of dealing with that and like certain situations doesn't ever really leave. But it was her standing up for herself in her speech that like kind of gave him the confidence to be like, you know what, no. I am a king now and I'm looking for my tall queen. <laughs> At this point, it's very clear that they are flirting. He is putting on a little bit heavy. He offers to take her to the movies and everything, but when he goes in for a kiss, she kind of swerves and is like, oh wow, I didn't realize that guys felt like that about things. Ma'am, you don't think that men are body conscious? Once again, Jody's showing her very narrow struggle worldview. Then they do what anyone would do in this situation. Dancing. To no music, they practice some bye-bye birdie routines in the park. I just imagine the writing team being like, well, Kissing Booth got away with DDR, so like we can do Birdie in the Park. Fucking La La Light right here. And there was some clear attraction here. She's definitely into him and they kiss the day after she broke things up with the dunk. Meaning yes, she is free to kiss whoever she wants, but she's clearly like not in the right headspace for it, isn't over the dunkster and feels super guilty. Cause dunk's definitely not over it. He's decided that he needs to delete every picture and video over their time together until Stella tricks him not to cause she knows he'll regret it. You know what, after this little king's ready to make the first move, ready to get back together. Which she also wants, but feels like she has to tell him what happened first, which is fair, approved, definitely like that. But the second she tells him, she Kiss Tommy, he's crushed. He's pining over old videos and she's out making out with a co-star. I get it, dude. So now he's going full bridge burn. He's deleting everything. He's throwing out anything that reminds him of her. All the cute animals, especially the giraffe. Why the giraffe? 
because tall. And because Stella found out that Ingvar was cheating on her, they decide they're gonna use one another to like make their exes jealous and show that they're living their best lives and kind of be like a point to protect themselves if they try to go back. And it's going great, Jody's pissed and realizes that she wants to do whatever it'll take to get him back. And of course, turns to the expert. Checkmate. Wow, I did not see that coming. She's a goddamn queen. She deserves the world. I want her movie in LA. So Harper starts role-playing as Dunk and anticipating the things he might say and gets super real and accurate. You kissed someone else mere moments after we broke up. I make you smoothies every day, Jody. I, I stand on crates for you, no. Jody. And it's not quite the worst case, uh, but almost is, because instead of getting mad and angry, it's like he doesn't even care. He and Stella are gonna start a flannel fashion movement respect. So heartbroken she remains and has to let Tommy know that she's just really not quite ready for a relationship and he says that they don't have to rush anything. A king not ready to give up. But he ends up inviting her to this cast bonfire thing where they burn something to get rid of negative energies that might be lingering in their mind so they can just clear it out before the show. So she bails on the dinner part of Farida, her best friend's birthday, and burns the heels that Dunk got her. You know, the one that made her confident in her true tall girl self. That doesn't feel like a tactic to move on. That just feels kind of cruel. Like even Kimmy's like, bitch, what are you doing? And obviously she instantly regrets doing it. She doesn't want to move on. And Kimmy's the one who pulls these suckers right out of the fire and douses the flames. The personal growth. How is literally everyone, including the bitch, a better character than Jody? Good job, filmmakers. You can save Jody, but you are crushing it with everyone else. And the hits keep coming when Stieg stands up to Farida's parents for her. Like they want her to go to med school and she's super into following her dreams and becoming a fashion designer. So he lets them know that he's super amazed by her talents and is so excited to see what she can do next and she deserves to try. Another goddamn king. Then they go do karaoke and the second that Farida says, just a little something to remind you of home. I had already started writing motherfucker, it's gonna be ABBA. If you put me to the test, if you let me try. Because obviously it was ABBA. That would be like somebody representing me with maple syrup. Don't do that. Except mine are not cool. He was actually the one that bought all of her clothing to make it seem like it all sold out. And I get what he was going for, but that is never a good tactic. Like you can only keep that going for so long and there's better ways to encourage someone into following their dreams and working for them. But it doesn't matter, they still kiss. But then she almost immediately freaks out because she's like breaking girl code, even though Jody definitely won't care because she doesn't like him anymore. And she was the first one to like forgive him for what happened. But yeah, sure. Okay, let's inject some more drama into this sucker when we got 40 minutes left. Cause yeah, I'm not even gonna like wait until later. Jody's completely fine with it and they're cute together. Then Jody finally shows up right at the end and catches Dunk and Stella singing their song at karaoke. And that's what you get, Jody. Like he's miserable and it's sad, but still. The movie then does the best thing it will do with Jody, in my opinion. Her parents are driving her home talking about the multicam film angles for the musical, her getting into Juilliard and she she starts having a massive panic attack. So they get her right out of the car, remind her that she's not dying, that the feeling's temporary and it's gonna be okay. And I really like that. That's like great tips for teens and adults and like everyone. There are significantly better movies for teens that deal with all of the issues that this movie ha has touched on and probably does it better in a lot of ways. But I just kind of really like this like really brought down version where they're acknowledging exactly what they're doing and calming her down. And it's something that everybody can use. I really just appreciate that they tried with a lot of what they put to screen here, even if I wish this movie was about literally any other character. Even Harper ends up admitting that she's had the voice in her head because she's feeling really self-conscious about like maybe bombing in LA, but no queen. You're gonna crush it. But what should have been a nice conversation between sisters feels a little bit condescending by the end. You want people to take you seriously? You don't have to be afraid to say, I don't know if you don't know. And I really just feel like it's the line delivery there that's the problem. So they're on some kind of boat for a pre-musical party, which is when we get uh, one of my all-time favorite lines. Uh, Dunk has to tell Ingvar off for Stella and then she ends up pointing over to Stig and Farida and says, I still want that. Ew, your brother? Yes. But she wants what they have. She wants what she believes Dunk and Jody could still have. I want to die. But then she says something I don't agree with. She points out rightfully that he's had Jody on a pedestal his entire life, which is very true. But then says that he pushed her off that pedestal the second she did something that didn't fit the perfect image of her, which is an issue a lot of people have, but I don't think that's what happened here. He put her on a pedestal, which is a place no one should be. He was way over idolizing her, which put a lot of pressure on her, 
but she still made mistakes. Anyway, point being here, don't ever put anybody on a pedestal. Um, they can still make this work. And I really don't think it had something to do with like her working outside of his image. He was just hurt. So it's the night of the big musical. And even though they ended up having a good talk on the boat where he encouraged her, he's not in his seat. He's not in his seat. And of course the voice pops back up and she tries to talk it down, but completely starts freaking out. And it's Kimmy who's literally been waiting in the wings for this exact thing to happen that comes in clutch. Figures out how to calm her down, that she's gonna be great. Points out that she's a teenager. She obviously deals with the same kind of things. And that even though she's been waiting in the wings, this isn't the way she wants to win. So instead she's gonna be in the literal wings, waiting to cue her if she messes up. Personal growth. Why is everybody more interesting than Jody? And other than a little bit of shakiness in the beginning and one little fuck up where she needs to be cued in, she crushes it. And manages to tell the voice to fuck off in significantly more PG-13 words. And I appreciate that. I like that even though she did really well and was feeling really good, that voice was still there, just kind of pointing out that like, no, this isn't something that, you know, it's not reasonable, it's not rational. So you can do amazing and it's still gonna tell you, you suck and you just kind of gotta work to elevate yourself out of it. And hey, Dunk was there all along. He was just taking pictures from the lighting booth. That's a better angle for pictures. Not with that lens. So she sees the pictures, obviously says he's super good and talented and he comes in with the... These are beautiful. It's the camera. I think it's the person behind it. Well, I think it's the person in front of it. Smooth, a short king. This boy would have options. And he did have options. That sweet little girl from the last movie, she was the best. Then it kind of goes into a conversation about him not having a thing and not wanting to force it, which is great and true and you shouldn't force things like that, but I don't remember that ever being a major stressor. Like I get that there's a focus on what people want to do going forward, like Farida with design, like Jody with like musicals and stage performing, but the direct like dunk, you got to pick a thing. I don't remember that ever being a conversation unless it was in the first one and I'm totally forgetting. I, I could have missed it in this one. There is a lot going on, but it just feels like this is just another theme they tried tying in that wasn't really there. Either way, then he comes in with another lady killer line. Look, I don't really know what I want to do with my life, but I know that I want you in it. So of course, they tell each other they love one another, they kiss, and we are right back to where we were at the end of the last movie. Except all the other characters have had some great growth and the Gluck was stunted, but no, he ended up like forgiving the Steakmeister. He's doing good too. I'm joking, Jody overcame a lot of this movie. We'll let her have it. And for some reason it doesn't end here, even though this was like the logical conclusion point, in my opinion, there's an after party. He ends up gifting her the yes, no, maybe letter framed, which again, super fucked that that was a thing. Like Jody, who do you think you are? Uh, but then she actually ends up changing it to the yes. And then it ends with as long as you love me, their karaoke song, which is a certified banger and I want to hear it all the time. And that's the movie. I, I think they did the after party so that they could just have like one last conversation with Harper have him give her the gift, play the song. Like most of that could have happened in the changing room, but I think they just really wanted to flex this party. Like truly la la light. I was waiting for somebody to just flip in the pool. That's the movie, definitely better than the first one, but Jody is still the worst. I will say I appreciate a lot of what they went for in this movie. I think they tackled some better issues. I think they made the, the way she expressed those issues a lot more sympathetic and better than just the like, you think your life is hard? Try being tall, which was dumb. Am I too mean to Jody? Probably. Longing for Joey King in these times. That's right, longing for the kissing booth in these times. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of Tall Girl 2. Uh, this is just inevitably uh, destined to get just like shit bombed in the ratings. I'm not saying that this is a good movie. I would probably give it like a two and a half out of five. There's worse movies out there, both for kids, teens, and adults. So I'm not gonna go too harsh on it. It's just painfully average. Like maybe it's a two, but I'll be generous. I'll give it a two and a half because I do like how they handled certain aspects of like mental health issues and stuff and, and anxiety attacks. It was very nice. But that's gonna do it for the video. Let me know what you guys are thinking down below. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters. Subscribe to the channel. If you're new, leave a like on the video if you're into that kind of thing. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm mostly okay and we'll catch you all later. I gotta, that was, I didn't, I didn't think this out. Okay, bye.